continue to work on uploading photos. Um, so I worked yesterday a bit on Libre Photos. I reviewed a pull request and uh, while I was doing that, um, I got bored <laughs> reviewing the pull request and started to fix the file upload. So um, now the file upload behaves a bit differently. Um, first of all, I found this keyword accept. And most importantly, I found on drop and on drop activates every time a photo gets added. Uh, and then it just uploads the photo. So we still have the issue that um, it says like that it doesn't understand what I want from it. And my general idea is now to um, to again try to play around with the headers. So let's see. So technically this should be now a form data. So that should work, I think. And um, the general idea is that we somehow have to convince him to accept that. And um, here in upload view, upload, oh, <laughs> all right. So um, can restart that. So I reviewed the pull request for new parser rules, daytime parser rules, and that's why I'm on the wrong branch. So let's go to Libre Photos. And then I call that git checkout upload probably. No, git list branches, no, git branches list. Yeah. It's called upload images, all right. Very cool. And now when I go to upload photos, I see it. All right, so we had the form parser added and the multi-part parser. Yeah, so let's go to localhost. Okay, it's not yet booted up. Okay, I can close this. Um, I still have to somehow convert the binary data to an actual object and it still doesn't do it, which is kind of annoying. So, All right. So I thought that the image would be base 64 encoded, but I don't think that that's the case. So that could be one issue. Um, Right, so now we have the upload button. I can click on it. It opens up. I click on pictures. And then if I go here, try again. Then it show, should show the old error, internal server error, except um, application JSON or text plane. I don't think that we actually want to send this. So byte objects has no attribute content. So that's still the same error. I think I will still try out to set a header. Axios multi-part form data. All right. Okay, so yeah, 
here we are just using headers and then from data dot slash get headers. I think we can try this. That would be great. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, where is it? <laughs> Photo actions, God damn it. It's down here, photo actions, right. So, and that's then obviously images get headers. Save. All right. Reload. Woo going to get exciting image get headers is not a function all right why is it not a function though it should be form data um, upload button tsx so we got here form data. So maybe I have to import form data. Could that be the reason? And he imports something else. <laughs> that would be interesting. All right, let's go up here. Form data. No, we just use it like this. Okay. I mean, we also don't use it on update out, so. But let's see. Photo actions, and then I want to console log images. I mean, I don't have to actually do it here, right? I can also do it somewhere else uh, in upload. All right. Reloads. I will choose an image. And I get images get headers is not a function. Console form data. Prototype. What? For some reason, we don't actually have anything in form data. What the hell? Uh, that's weird. Um, all right. Let's go to settings form data, form data append, file, and then the name. Hmm. We're very weird. So Let's go to upload images again. Load button. Okay. Okay, he is actually adding something 
I just don't see it and I don't know why I don't see something. Um, it's not a function. Switch to Windows version of phone data. Phone data is only is used only on Node. If you run it on a browser, it will switch to Windows version of phone data. I saw this in their code. Uh, All right, so maybe it uses the same format the form would use if the encoding type were set to multi-part form data. Okay. Um, right. Okay, so I now use the file name instead of photos, and then we will iterate over the whole form data thing, and that should work, I think. But I still don't get why we don't get anything. I can remove that for the moment. Yeah, no, it's still like empty. Okay, and if I do like form data, well, if I do it like that, do you then see something? No still is empty all right uh, if I do it like that do you then see something no still not all right maybe I can write form data or something form data dot Entries. Maybe that will work. Okay. Now I get an iterator, which isn't helpful. Get all. I need a string. Uh, okay, then I will just go get the values. I'm <laughs> just getting it right away. Okay. Mm. Okay. From data entries Yeah, 
that's kind of shit. Okay, but I will just check again if something gets sent. All right. So we definitely um, do send something, maybe, I don't know. I mean, even if it's like an empty form, we shouldn't get like the binary data, but a null, null error. And um, we now have to fix this. So I will rename that the form data. So we get a form. Come on. Here's how I do a file upload in React using Axios. So that's correct. Okay, content type. All right. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, reload. Okay, still an internal error. Um, It's still probably the same thing, right? Oh no, he doesn't find the actual value, which is obviously a different problem. But he sees now the in-memory uploaded file and he sees the screenshot. So maybe it did work. Okay, um, so. I think that will be enough. Request data. Um, reload. I don't have to reload. No. Uh, let's click on here. Upload error. String object has no attribute content. Okay, that's weird. Okay, so string object has no content. Um, um, okay, string object has no attribute content. And um, so what? I don't know what he see. I don't get what he sees. So photo in that case is just the name. No, I want, want like the name and the file, right? Oh no, oh no, no, no. Um. Okay. 
json.read um, how is it called I uh, know it's called like JSON, right? JSON? Is he still complaining? Yes, okay, thanks. So, let's see. Upload. Module JSON has no attribute read. Okay, JSON. Python. Thumbs. Okay. Load. All right. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I don't need to reload. Uh, okay, so let's see. Query dig object has no attribute read. Okay. <sighs> That's. I don't like that. Maybe I have to do like entries or something because it's a query dict, right? So if it's a query dict, query dict, awesome docs. <laughs> yes, okay, it's a query dict. Then I need like uh, entries. No. Yes, I want to iterate over it. Items. Just like the standard dictionary items method, get except this uses the same last logic as get item. Return values, get list the data with the requested key as a Python list. I think lists like item except it included all values as a list for each member of the dictionary. Okay, so what's the difference between that and that? Returns the dict representation of query dict very key list pair. Okay, I will just do dict. That should work, I think. Save. And then it will complain that he can't find like name and other other thing. But we can fix that. All right. String object has an attribute content. All right. Um, right, because it's only like one dict. That's why he's complaining. Oh no. Um, and, then he and then he wants to trade over these. Okay, let's do. Maybe like that. Okay. New 
error, please. Tuple object has an attribute content. Yes. Awesome. So now I have a tuple. And um, he is complaining in, I guess, the hash function, right? So let's see. Yes. So let's go to the hash function. Um, all right. So now we don't use content, but use it like that. Awesome. Let's go back here. And um, these are fine. So now we have the same here. That now works. And here I have to do that. Because now it's a tuple. And then I want to write it. So technically, um, he shouldn't upload any new image um, because we already have it, right? So it should just return true and that's it. And it's red. Argument should be byte, uh, bytes like object or ASCII string, not list. Uh, all right. Okay, it's still there. So it returns a list, but we want the first one. That looks very ugly. <laughs> I uh, directory watcher. Uh, here we go. I don't know if it's base sixty four um, encoded, so I have to check. Argument should be bytes and, and not in memory uploaded file, right? So we can now remove that and that. So he should just load this and then it should work and he ch should just write it. Okay. Let's see. Expected string bytes are as path like object, not in memory uploaded file. Loaded file to bytes. Okay, I just have to do a dot file. Save. And then I have to do the same here. Save. And let's see. It's getting interesting. It's still red, okay. So what do you want now? Maybe I still have to do it like a different way. Oh, 
Okay, so I now do a read, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Save. Okay. Not bytes IO. Oh, come on. <laughs> bytes IO to bytes. I don't get it. Okay, let's do this again. Safe. At least I'm getting different errors. Not bytes IO. So it doesn't matter if I do like a read or not. not. Yeah, okay. I will just <laughs> Google that error. Let's do this. Bytes I O two bytes. I don't get it. It's a file like object, read them. Okay. For simplicity's sake, let's consider writing instead of reading for now. I O bytes. The key difference here is optimization performance. Bytes I O is able to do some optimization that makes it faster than simply concatenating one by one. Okay. The thing is, for the function, I have to like convert it into um, bytes, right? So okay. OK, 
Okay, let's try using bytes.io instead. So, how is it called? IO bytes IO SF. Okay. So, theoretically, that should be enough. Oh damn, it worked. I mean, it didn't write the file yet, but it did work. So I have to do the same for actually um, writing this file. So it is file.io bytes write. There is already file name VB, photopath VB, SF, and then write. And this, these are the bytes. All right. Um, now let's test it with a new image. I mean, I'm like kind of stumped that it now works. Uh, all right. So royalty free photos, royalty free images. All right. Pexels.com, man. You will save me again. Let's do this. Cost free download. Okay. So let's go to downloads and save it. And now I will use our grand new API. And it crashed. <laughs> Request entity too large. What is happening? Loading image. Error in solution. I'm running engine X as a front end to PHP fast CG server. Yes, when users are trying to upload one plus one B sites, reverse proxy says request entity too large. Okay. Then I have to go ah client max body size two megabytes. Alright. Um Set max size of post data allowed. This also affects file upload. To upload large files, this value must be larger than upload max files. Okay. So we have to allow very large objects to be sent via <laughs> the post command, I guess. Okay, so in order to fix this, we have to go to proxy engine x config, and uh, we have to set here now how large it should be. Client max body size 100 megabytes. Okay. Uh, 
and then I have to rebuild that container. CD, CD, LibreFoto, Docker, um, CD proxy, and then I have to do. Wait, no, I can also do just sudo docker compose not up but just build and then he should also just rebuild the last thing All right very cool now i can do a up force recreate and now it should work. The thing is, I don't know um, if this is the right approach, right? Because now we can send very large objects. Client body max size. How to configure right? Because I can imagine that you should like force it. The default value for client max body size is one megabyte and it can be set in HTTP server location context as in most cases this directive in a nested block takes precedent over the same directive in the ancestor block. Okay, don't forget to reload configurations. Okay. I don't know how a large file upload would work then, but mean I will figure that out I guess okay it's still starting up so this will probably only work for images for now because I don't know yet how to large large files uploading large files Django Django will by default put uploaded file data into memory if it's less than 2.5 megabytes. Anything louder will be written to the service temp directory. Okay. I mean, the thing is, should I do it? I don't know if like HTTP is the right uh, API for that. Right? Because maybe you do it with like the file transfer protocol, FTP or SFTP. All right, anyway, it should work now, I think. Yes. Reload. And now it says I operation on closed file. What is happening? Uh, Let's see. Uh, I/O operation on closed file value error. Oh, all right. So it tries to do something, but then it closes it, and then you can't reopen it. I don't know. Seems fishy. Uh, directory watcher, okay, so Hmm. 
new temp byte stream All right, maybe I have to do a dot read. Maybe that will fix it. Because now I have like basically forced it. No. Enter what? What the hell? Oh, all right. I operation on a closed file. But I have changed that. Uh, here we go. Attribute error enter. Okay. So he does not like that. Okay. Let's see. Instead, indent correctly your for statement and should be with a with block. Okay, so with image as, yes. Outside the width block, the file is closed. After you leave the intended block under with open a CSV, it will close the file. Yes, but I want to open it again. I want to open it! Mm. No, nope. come on. Let's go back and um, Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, so. Ah, and now he complains <laughs> that it isn't, <laughs> that it can't be opened. Like, come on.
So that should work, I hope. No. I O operation on a closed file. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay. So maybe if I do it like that. Now he complains on enter. Okay. Same error. After it has been closed using the close statement. Okay, let's see. Did I use close here? No, I did not. Did I use close here? No, I did not. I think it will automatically um, call close, probably. Um, accessing a closed file, right. We use open method to open the students.csv. So if it's closed, it doesn't work, I know. Yeah, I somehow have to open it, but only sometimes, I guess. Why? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, I hate this.
Didn't move it. No, okay. I thought for a second that I moved the file. Uh, all right, so let's try again. But he really doesn't like open, so I don't know what to do with that. So if I now do that, he will complain about something completely different. Uh, okay, come on. Expected string bytes OS path like object, not bytes IO. So that's the general issue. So we will. This is stupid. What if I do that? Maybe that will work. I don't know. Oh, come on, stop. Let's do that. Maybe that works. Embedded null byte. All right, I need a short break and then we'll be back in a second. Let's continue. Um, right, so now he is complaining that it's null. Okay. Weird. No need to call open on the file, it's already open. You should be able to pass it straight into dict reader.
maybe something like that I don't know Byte size object is required, not IO bytes IO. Now it works for the first read, but not for the second. Authentication credentials are not provided. Okay, so now we also know that we need authentic credentials to upload something. So that's good. All right, so I operation on closed file. <laughs> so in memory, upload file, keep file open. All right, um, I think I will then just do it differently on views.py, maybe that will work. Um, so we have the image hash here. Um, I kind of want to open it again. All right, I will refactor that a bit. I don't need that. Also don't need that. I will use that one. I will take that, do content here content here save then I will go here and we'll do that instead photo dot file and here I will do the same but I will also do an open Let's see, I get an error. Expected string bytes or path like object not bytes IO. And that's, that error is where? <laughs> okay, now he's complaining about that. That's also fun. Save. No, he's still complaining. I operation call closed on file. <laughs> With content as F. So I can't open the bytes IO, but he complains that it's closed. Are you kidding me? Like what? How to open bytes IO? Think of bytes IO as a file object. After you finish writing the image, the file cursor is at the end of the file. So when image open, try to call, it gets immediately end of file. You need to add output.seek0 before passing to image open. Are you kidding me? Of course, of course. Oh man. Let's 
let's make it a bit brighter. Okay, so let's do it again. Open, but this time I do a dot seek. It is a lie. It is a lie. Oh, man. No. Okay. It did, in fact, not work. So let's see. Binary I.O. The easiest way to create a binary stream is with open. With B in, in string, okay. Now, no, that's such a ah, why, why? So, okay, I get that error. Okay, let's try again. this so much. <laughs> I.O. operation on a closed file, the file that does not exist because you can't open a byte I.O. Are you fucking kidding me? What the fuck?
Does this work? Okay, I didn't see a success message. Memory view. <laughs> Okay. Okay, maybe I have to encapsulate it into a buffered reader. This is so stupid. Let's try it again. Oh wow, now it's completely crashing. Okay, I forgot to put that in brackets. Sorry about that. Uh, reload. Value error at how? How? Like it's not even funny anymore. No matter what I do, it just says uh, I can't, can't do this. Fuck off, man. <sighs> All right. I will put this here and then we look if it actually can write anything. Um, yeah, that's not my solution for now. To just ignore it. Okay, and I get the same error, I guess. No, a byte like object is required, not IO bytes IO. Right? Binary even, like, I don't know. Something different. 
Oh, it is back! Amazing. I hate this so much. No matter what I do, it complains. Now it complains on a completely different... All right, so because we now ro um, actually try to write something, so... So it should be now in data, I guess, data. Media uploads one. Here we go. Empty. Ah. Oh, my God, I hate this. Okay, so. I still somehow have to fix this. Um, Like that maybe, I don't know. So, because the other image just doesn't want to be deleted, because reasons, I will download a new image. Very cool. So, let's go to Libre Photos, click on Upload and then Pixels like that, and it complains again. So why is he also using that? All oh, right, I, I somehow executed two things of uh, at once. <laughs> bytes like object is required, not um, bytes that I owe. Now, okay, obviously.
I'm very annoyed, very annoyed because I don't get it at all. Like this shouldn't be that hard, but somehow it complains a lot. All right, so let's go to Libre Photos. Click here. Now I click on here. Okay, so let's see. I.O. operation on closed fire. It's pretty much the same as before. Ah, I know what the reason is why it's complaining again about that. I'm not actually uploading anything. Because I think the old file is still in the list. Yeah, I have to like get rid of the list after I do something. So Okay, 500 again. No, no. In fact, it's not. Okay, it tried to do something, but I didn't even get the fucking arrow. Are you kidding me? Okay, like, I don't know if I want to continue working on this, to be honest. It's very frustrating right now. I mean, I can I, I keep going for half an hour, but after that I will just quit. That's stupid. Okay, we'll write a comment. do So these are the two issues. Okay. The easiest way to create a binary stream is with open. Okay. But how do I write to it? I.O. write to file example. So I have a bytes I.O. Open file is text I.O. wrapper. Then I have to wrap the binary object. Okay.
Getting an XFI represented as a bytes IO object. Okay. Then I have G and then I have G dot read. Open temporary location VB. But that will not work at all. <laughs> like, because <sighs> if I now do an open of photo dot file, it will say, uh, nah, man, I won't do that. Fuck you. Because I already did that like a trillion times now. Get buffer, okay. That could maybe work, I don't know. Okay. Okay, so let's see if this works. Let's download another image. Very cool. Let's go to Libra Photos. And it crashed. IO file. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Now if I do an F5. Oh no, now it's just crashed up here. <coughs> I will only send a get buffer and then we will use it like that, I guess. Nope, it crashed. I o buffer random object has no attribute get buffer. inline 885 so it says that here I don't have a buffer okay that's weird now it complains that I don't get a buffer down there
Oh, man. This is such a pain. Yeah, so that will definitely not work down here. <laughs> um, yeah, all right. Get buffer. Uh, directory watcher. API. Okay. Subclasses of uploaded file. Okay. I have a name, I have size, I have content type, content type extra, read. Read the entire uploaded data from the file. Be careful with this method. If the uploaded file is huge, it can overwhelm your system. Okay, so here it says that I should use that instead. Not file, but this. Let's do it again. And it crashed. Enter. Like why? This is the piece of code which had attribute and enter with okay something is a function when it isn't a function okay that's correct Nine fifty five. Okay, so maybe I can now do open. Okay. Try number 1000 and it failed. Embedded null byte. Yeah, I already did that <laughs> in memory file upload. Try first to load raw data into a bytes container. Okay, so <laughs> that's so ridiculous, man. Bytes IO. <laughs> All right, 
So, let's do it again. Now I have to remove that again. Hey, handle new image missing three required positional arguments. User image path job ID. So technically, uh, a five. Well, it should have written something, but it didn't. So that's bad. Okay, so it probably just wrote nothing into it. Because I have to do that. Let's try it again. The bytes like object is required, not bytes IO. Okay, now I have a byte tail and now I have to do a get buffer, right? Get buffer, something like that, get buffer. Here we go, get buffer. Yes. Okay. Okay, that now works because of this very easy API, obviously. Okay. And it crashes again. Bytes object has an attribute get buffer. So now it's bytes, but if I now <laughs> remove that. Then, uh, no, for one more, right. Uh, let's do this again. Then it says bytes are all right. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Driving me insane. You didn't read the data from IO bytes. Wow. 
Oh, hell yeah. Let's do it like that. Isn't that beautiful? Are you kidding me? But it's still empty, like what the f... <sighs> okay, I will try it with a new image and then we will see if it actually works or not. I mean, that here is basically the file that we wanted to add because it's the hash and um, yeah. Okay, download. This is driving me insane. Like, <laughs> I now have like at least 200 tabs open. Local host 3000. All right. Okay. Oh, I have 12. I mean, let's check, uh, check it out. It's still zero bytes. Because it didn't write shit. Again. Oh man, okay, so I will open a console now because I kind of need the test data. Uh, CD data, CD uh, protected media, temp. What, what did I call it? Medium, right? CD uploads. Um, Zoro, um, yes. Okay, so let's try it again. We got an error. It's still zero bytes. Uh, yeah, that's like bad, you know. It should have data. Okay, so the first try failed. Let's do another one. Okay. Oh, it worked. Yes. Holy shit. This is very stupid. All right, so um, that works. Now I only have to do this and that's uh, request user image path is image path uh, photos path, right. Uh, 
and the last one is job ID then there I can probably just put a zero okay so save can I even now delete the image no I still can't delete them why oh man okay so I have uploads okay let's do this again upload is correct and now we have the new image how was the image called f5 can I now delete it no <laughs> okay um, it's called pixels That's the right image. Awesome. That's in protected media uploads. So I guess I'm now done because <laughs> I lost my cool multiple times. Um, but it kind of works now. Um, yeah, now I only have to clean up the UI a bit maybe I can do that now upload button I don't know how well it works with videos right because maybe I have to implement FTP but it should work for uh, for images but not for videos so but we can test that in the next following weeks but I think I will need like FTP or something for that like mm, upload Veer FTP Django. It looks like your import is wrong. FTP.py, okay. I think that's probably the better way to do it. Django upload large files FTP or HTTP. Okay, maybe I will have just to set uh, set the limit high. Um, it probably won't continue an upload um, because that's something I had I would have to implement. But basic file upload, um, changing upload behavior. progress bar upload handler hmm then we could show like a little progress bar uh, that would be cool all right so but I can now close and the API is like really stupid like like man sometimes I have to wrap it then I have to seek to the start of the file and Jesus Christ man like it should just do it at the end of the width like what all right but anyway um uh, i have to do a couple of things now um until this is done uh, forget accepted files after drop um yeah but i will now do 
some nice little things. Um, I want to make it look prettier. So How does that look? The same, all right. Um, I want that the other thing also looks the same. So I have to add this to the element. And now it should work, yes. So now we have the upload button here. Um, hmm. Let's see, where does it belong? So now it looks kind of weird. I don't know. Google Photos. So where's the upload button there? Okay, it's just a big fat upload button. The issue we are having is that um, this custom search bar is not exactly the same width as that one. And then it's like a bit wrongly adjusted. But maybe we can fix a bit of that with uh, flex wrap. Display, flex, yes, and then Display flex because it has like a, a lot of cool things. So I want to flex start, flex end, center, space around, space between, uh, stretch, baseline. Center. Okay. Okay, what's inline flags? That looks interesting. Save, reload, it looks the same. Okay. Uh, flex block. Flex direction. Okay, column or row. Flex wrap, justify content. Okay. Hmm. 
Very cool. Um, what else do we have? Align items. Align content, flex start, center, space between, space around, stretch, flex shrink, flex grow, flex bases. Damn, there are so many like settings in CSS. Okay. I think I now just have to fix the bar, uh, the search bar. Okay, debounce on key down, top menu hide the Z index, text align left, yes, width. All right, so here is how it's supposed to be where it started, it's now not 2, but 2.2 or something. Yeah, that's better. 2.1 probably. And then I have to change search bar width. That's here. So, so that's now smaller. And yes, it's all hard coded. <laughs> Why is it larger now? Weird. Okay, now it's smaller. Uh, 2.4. 2 All right, that looks nicer like maybe 2.2 .2, and then I have to align the left value again. Yeah, so that's now pretty much, like it should be like a couple of pixels in the one, di in one direction, but all in all, it looks good. So if I now do that, hmm. it shifts definitely. But it's fine, I guess. So it's a bit nicer. I still don't know why they're not closer together. So flex start, I guess. But I think I already used flex start, right? Uh, top menu CSS. Yeah, no, center, all right. It still does not want to move. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, I want them to be close together. So 
So let's see. Um, let's pick the element. All right, so the diff is way further ahead than I thought it would be. Search header, okay, weird. Custom search. Class name header. Yeah. So that's larger than it should be. Interesting. Uh, yeah, that's a weird issue. Okay, so when I now use that, so that's input prompt, that's correct, and then I have this search.header thing that's just way larger. That's a weird class name header. So it's probably this one. What? Oh no, I think. Um, <laughs> he doesn't like that at all. I can remove that again. Um, class name header. Margin auto. All right. UI search header, okay. UI search header, so that's auto and that's auto. And I will now do like one. Well, it crashes a lot. Okay, so it doesn't change anything on the width. That's interesting. UI search header, it's not header itself. So if I go here and go to search, custom search, header, 
All right, header and element. So that may be the problem. Very interesting. So if I do now here 80% and then do 100% there, does it work then? F5. Okay. Interesting. Input prompt, div element. <laughs> what is happening? Um, yeah, all right. So something is off with that whole thing. Um, not sure what though. Okay, so I think I will, so the flex thing was correct, but the other things we can remove, I think. Discard changes, yes. Then I can just do this and that's fine. Okay, so. It's at least now somewhat nicely formatted. Still like the whole layout is not, not yet perfect and crashes the whole time. Um, anyway, uh, I think I can um, push that now. I don't want to actually add this to the code now. I will, I think, wait a bit longer for that. Um, CD Libre Photos. Stage changes. Git commit. Make uploads work. And uh, then I go to see the Libre photo front end. And I will do a git checkout minus b upload images. And then I will add all the things. Oh, right, we, we, still, we also still have to fix settings. So that's also a thing we have to do. And yeah, fix this. <laughs> um, yeah. So we can add this first stage changes, git commit bump react drop so on version. Okay, and then we have this one. Uh, stage. Git commit. Add action to upload image. OK. 
Okay, then, have, then we have this one. That's later. Yeah, I don't have to push this because it doesn't work yet. Stage changes. Git commit at upload button. Also, please, yes, git commit at upload button to the top menu. All right. Very cool. So we now have a lot of open commits. Uh, and now I just have to do like a lot of testing that it works. I'm still not sure about uploading it to um, protected media because my first intuition was to look uh, in my data folder. And um, I think it will be confusing to people. So I think I will add that back to just put it into the scan directory, create a new folder uploads and then create a f user folder and then put the images in there. Uh, because that's just a bit better to understand, I guess. Yeah, and then I have to check if multiple images work, how well uploading videos works. Um, I have to make it deactivatable. Um, and I have to fix settings and that accepted files don't get uploaded twice if you click twice on the button. So a lot of things to do, but um, that was successful. Yay! It only took like three or four hours to do that. But it was very exhausting mentally because the API is not good. Like really not good. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please leave a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also sponsor me on GitHub Sponsors, which, ha which helps me out a lot. And if you found a bug, leave a comment. All right, see you next time. Bye.